Coming up on this edition of Turner's Takes, we're going to take a look at the Rangers. They're hot going into the All-Star break. The unfortunate passing of Steve McNair. And, of course, NHL free agency and NBA free agency gone wild. So stay tuned. Turner's Takes starts right about now. You say you know just who. Welcome to another rousing edition of Turner's Takes. I am Jake Turner. Glad to see all you sports fans joining me on this evening of Thursday, July 9th, 2009. Hey, hear me up on this one. The Rangers have won seven of their last eight games. Don't believe me? Let's go to the Rangers Angels recap. After the Rangers got a huge sweep against the Tampa Bay Rays, they were feeling pretty confident flying off to Los Angeles to take on the Angels. Unfortunately, a little empty-handed as first baseman Chris Davis was taken down to AAA Oklahoma City. A 2-1 batting average is just not going to cut it and way too many strikeouts. But hopefully he'll get a swing back and he'll be back in uniform by end of July. But that was not all that was happening for the Rangers. Kevin Millwood did not make the All-Star break. It showed on Monday. He gave up nine runs. And it was a big, costly loss for the Rangers. No, it wasn't. In game two, they rocked it. Dustin Nipper came in from injury. He was yanked into three innings. Just wasn't getting the job done. Derek Holland came in into relief. Did a great job along with C.J. Wilson and Frankie Francisco. But nothing compared to Andrew Jones jacking a three-run shot, clinching it for the Angels 8-5, to five, and then Andrew Jones show continued on for one more night. Three home runs for him, 12th, 13th, and 14th. Not to mention Taylor Teagarden in his first home run of the year, and also Marlon Bergen won. The Rangers took two of three in the Angels, and now have won seven of eight. I told you, and right now they're in Seattle right now, taking the lead in the seventh inning, one to nothing. Rangers update here, and the folks, it's not good. Unfortunately, C.J. Wilson came in after a stellar outing by Tommy Hunter, gave him no earned runs and only four hits. He lets one go as Frank Gutierrez checks it out to right and gets the three-run shot, and unfortunately, the Rangers could not do anything in the top of the ninth. They lose this one in a shocking way, 3-1. to one. That makes it now a half a game up on the Angels, while Seattle is now only three and a half away from taking first place. In the NFL, we have our Iron Men: Brett Favre, Johnny Unitas, Jack Lambert, Dick Buckus, Steve McNair. Steve McNair on the field was an Iron Man, never gave up until the clock struck zero. Unfortunately, his life came to a close, unfortunately, on July 4th, 2009, when he was found dead in his downtown Nashville condominium. He was 36. We already know the story off the field, but what we don't know is what he did on the field. Off the field, we didn't know him. We didn't know what his life was like. What we saw on the field, though, was a man who never gave up, a strong-willed leader, one that you could tell your kids about. One that you could have your kids idolize. If you wanted five yards, he'd get you six. He would push that defense, you would push that pile until he could get that first down and more. You want an option past Eddie George, he would dish it right to him and make sure he gets the ten yards. He would give a nice little quick slant, get the first down. He would also give us one of the best moments of Super Bowl history. Unfortunately, he didn't get what he wanted, and that was a Super Bowl ring. With two minutes left in the game, the Rams looked like they were going to run away with this. Until Steve McNair took them down the field, but only came up one yard short after a quick slam pass to wide receiver Kevin Dyson. One yard short. That was it. It didn't matter, though. It mattered how strong of a leader he was in those crucial two minutes. Even though he didn't get the ring, he got the fans' hearts. The big loss for the NFL. He had the numbers to prove it. This man from Alcorn State, 1995 NFL draft, shocked a lot of people. He just had that heart, that love to play the game. Steve Aaron McNair will be missed by many. 
Steve McNair died, age 36. If you'd like more information on the Steve McNair story, please go to my website at www.turnerstakes.blogspot.com. Moving from that somber note, we move on to the hardwood floors of the NBA, and that free agency continue, continues to get a little while there. Uh, first off, Ben Gordon, Charlie Villanueva, and then also more news. Of course, Rasheed Wallace is now a Celtic. Now, how about this one, for example, here? The Mavericks have made a home run trade here. First off, they got back Jason Kidd, point guard. Got a $25 million deal, three years. That's a good addition. Nine, po nine points a game at least, and he had over five rebounds on the defensive side. So it's going to be a big help still from the Mavericks' leadership. The Mavericks also received forward Sean Marion, who averages 12.9 points per game. He's trying to get that nickname back, The Matrix. And, of course, they also got Chris Humphreys out of from Toronto also. He had a 3.9 points per game last year. Didn't have many starts. He's trying to get a um, revitalization to his career, so hopefully Rick Carlisle's system will be able to do that for him. Toronto will get uh, forward Hidu Turkoglu. He averaged 16.8 points, and just remember, he was a great member of the Orlando Magic in the NBA Finals. So Toronto's getting quite a winner there to help out Chris Bosh. And Memphis, well, finally, folks, Mavericks got rid of shooting guard Jerry Stackhouse. He is now a member of the Memphis Grizzlies, and they also get the Mavericks' second-round draft pick. So good moves for the Mavericks so far, but is it enough to get to the NBA Finals? Only time will tell. And Well, from that wild free agency, let's go to another one. From the hardwood floor, we move on to where to skate to the rink of the NHL and take a look at this. The Stars have made a splash here. They signed Flame Center Warren Peters to a one-year deal. GM Joe Newendike decided to say Warren is a gritty center iceman with underrated skill, and he will bring quality depth to our organization, close quote. There's more news. Also, we move on to the Penguins. Senator Maxine Talbert, he has shoulder surgery. He'll be expected to miss four to five months. Keep in mind, he was the Game 7 hero in the Stanley Cup. He gets scored the last two goals for the Penguins, winning that one 2-1. to one. The Blackhawks made a splash, taking signing back defenseman Cam Barker for three years. The Flyers made a big deal, stealing the Ducks defenseman Chris Pronger to a seven-year deal, $34.4 million. The Ducks will keep their center, Todd Merchant. And then also a rousing goodbye to a great NHL player, Joe Sackett, center for the Colorado Avalanche, 40 years old. He's leaving on a high note here. He's retiring after 20 seasons. And he was a two-time Stanley Cup winner in 1996 and 2001, both with the Avalanche. And he was a 13-time All-Star Olympic gold medalist. A few notes before we say goodbye on this Week in Review show. The Pistons have a new man at the wheel, and that's John Kuster. Goodbye, Mr. Curry. Kuster's going to bring an offensive minded like he did with the Cleveland Cavaliers. He's the ass assistant coach there. And in 2004, he was underneath the tutelage of head coach Larry Brown in 2004, one of the guys that helped the Pistons get to their NBA Finals and win it. So, with the newly acquired Ben Gordon and Troy Villanueva, they're going to try and score as many points as they can to beat these NBA teams. And also one more note in the NFL, a Minnesota judge has blocked the suspensions of defensive tackles Pat Williams and Kevin Williams for the Minnesota Vikings. That means you will see them in Viking purple coming September. Well, folks, thank you very much for joining us. I'm glad to be back here. Now, if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, emails, please send them to me at NFL5481 at Yahoo.com or you can check my blog that has a story on Steve McNair and also what happened in Wimbledon at turnerstakes.blogspot.com. I'll be back tomorrow for our daily beat. Until then, this is Jake Turner signing off.